Okay, glad to see you're back with me. If you did not catch part one, you need to push pause, write this information down, go pick up the free sheet so that you can be coloring along with us. Okay, go catch part one. We'll be here when you get back. No, seriously, go, go. All right, for you that have stayed, we are going to keep going. I'm gonna start with some yellow down in here to mirror the yellow that's down in this one. And this is just the part that has not yet turned that pink that is um, going to end up happening. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit of green right here. What I'm trying to do is make that look like it's behind this. So, can you see that? It's, oh, you're catching the color, the waxiness from the prismas. So I'm gonna have to go a shade darker because it didn't really show up. There we go, now it's showing up. I just want that to look like it's tucked in behind there. And that was the best way to do it, was to give a little bit of color back in there. So now I'm gonna have my colors. I'm gonna start with my light. This is light, light right up here. It's coming around. It's basically all the light. Now I'm gonna go to my dark, my darkest, and it's almost just medium, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dark in. Then all the rest of that is my medium shade. Yeah, there's a lot of medium in here. And I think it's because it's around the edge. Okay, then I'm gonna use my light and blend everything. See, we were almost finished with that first flower. Did you realize we were that close? Yeah. Coming down in there. Okay, so there is our first blossom. And there, I think I got most of the wax where you can actually see the picture now. Okay, so if your white lines are not showing up here from the reflective light, just go in with your darkest shade and go in there and pop that. And it'll give, um, it'll give it a lift to where those whites will show up better. And then anything that's not really blended that you want to blend better it's a good time to just push pause and go in there and do a little bit of blending. All right, now, um, do you wanna do another one or do you just wanna do the background and do the rest on your own? <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. We'll do one more, it's fine. I do understand, seriously. Okay, so we're gonna look at this one. It's in your bottom left corner. I'm gonna start with the dark now, do you see how this looks like it's a little out of focus? There is not a big trick on how to do that. Let me show you. We're gonna put this in. We're not gonna have real defined lines, okay? We're gonna have a defined line on the outside, but on the inside, not so much. Here we had more lines that were very definite here, we're gonna keep them kind of sloppy. If I'm allowed to say we're gonna be sloppy for a bit. And then I'm filling in the light. Actually, it's the medium. There wasn't much light on this one at all in comparison to these. So I did go ahead and keep it in the darker tones instead of going to the light. Now what I am gonna do though, and I'm gonna turn this where I can get to it. I'm sorry. Um, I am gonna go over the whole thing with the lighter color, just to blend it. The better I blend this, the more unfocused it's gonna look, which is what this whole thing is. The only one that's really focused is this one and part of this one, okay? You're gonna do this one just like you did this, but I wanna show you how to do unfocused. 
you're just going to come in here and try to really blend these. In fact, this is where I could probably get away with using this because I feel like it mutes it a little bit. It's the Colorless Blender. Yeah, see it leaves little bits and stuff, so that's why I'm just not a big fan of it, but it does have its place. So, still trying to go the direction that this is growing. Okay. Then we're going to come in with our pinks. Um, yeah, we could do a little bit of yellow. You're right. A little bit of yellow or maybe even a little bit of green. I guess we'll go with some yellow since it's light. We'll do some yellow right there. And we'll do a little bit of yellow right here. And then we're going to come with the medium green, okay, that medium one, and just do a little bit right up into the edge, okay, just a little bit. We're not going to go very far up into it. We're going to come in with our pinks. Now, we've been doing each petal individual. You're graduating. We're going to do this whole piece all at once. All right, I'm turning it so that I can get to it better. I'm going to come in and start looking for the lightest lights. There's one there, that line that we usually find. There's some here. Now you pause. If you're coloring along, you pause any time you need to. Come back right to where you left off. No big deal. Okay, we're doing the lightest lights, still going that direction that the lines are. As much as you can, you go in the direction. And that's how you're going to get the veins automatically in while you're coloring. Okay, so go ahead and get that in. I'm not being real particular. This video is mainly for the first time, people that have not done anything with grayscale before. The reason I'm not being particular, and I don't, I don't mean this bad, they're not going to be real particular because they're not familiar with it. And that is awesome. Don't be inhibited. Don't be um, afraid of it. That's one reason we're doing this the way we are. Okay? If you've been doing grayscale for a while, then you take this page, you run with it, you get in there and you get your lights and darks, do all the blending, do all that stuff. That's, that's great and kudos for you. But again, a lot of this is being done this time for those first timers that are really just afraid or apprehensive, might be a better word about um, tackling a grayscale picture. That's the people that I'm really wanting to get hold of this time. I want to show you that there's really nothing to worry about. I'm playing this very loose and I'm not being overly particular and I want to show you how even in doing that we can still turn out a wonderful page. All right, so now that I'm coming in with the darker, and again, it doesn't matter. I've, I've tried to show you. It doesn't matter if you've started with the lights or the darks. It just really doesn't. Okay, that's why I've kind of switched it up each time a little bit. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, she never does it the same way twice. Yeah, uh-uh. And that was to prove just that point, that it, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. It's all going to work. That's how awesome these grayscale books are. So even if you have problems seeing what's in front or behind of something, 
You can do these grayscale books because it shows you where all the shadowing is. It shows you where the darks go. Alright? Just, that's, that's all the splendor of this, is that you don't have to make those decisions. And if you'll watch when you're doing these books, you'll begin to see where those darks go. And then when you go back over and you're working on another book, you'll automatically be going, oh, yeah, that's behind that. Yeah, if that were grayscale, this would be darker. Or, yeah, that's there. That would be lighter. So this is a great teaching tool. So you that have been afraid to jump out there and just get going with it, you can get going with it now. You'll be an old pro. Again, these books are grayscale coloring books. Now I'm going to go to my lightest and do some blending. They are grayscale coloring books. And the ones that I work in, this one is by Nicole Stalker. And the paper and the book, oh, it's just lovely. It's so nice and thick. Yeah, it's just really, I don't know, she just didn't. She didn't take any shortcuts when she found her printer. Um, the people that printed her book for her, they did go all out and just did an awesome job. The paper is really a good quality paper. So, yeah, I'm really hoping she comes out with another book next year. I would even love it if she got some pictures during Christmas and then next year put out a uh, a Christmas grayscale book. I've, I've been toying with the idea of taking me some pictures and seeing what I could come up with on grayscale because I think it's just, um, they're beautifully done. Just really beautiful pictures to color. I'm currently working on a conversion chart that whatever video you're watching and they tell you what color to use, if it's um, Prisma and you've got polychromos, then my uh, little cheat sheet will tell you what color to use instead or what color is close. I've been having some problems converting over the Lycra pencils by Rembrandt, but um, I've already converted over the Marco Raffines and the Marco Renoirs and the Polychromos. I sat down with all my swatches last night, well, took hours yesterday during the day, but I did get all those finished. I don't own many more pencils than that. So it's hard for me to find links where other people have them in a way that I really trust the color that I'm seeing. So it may just get published on my Etsy that way. And then um, you'll have to take your own colors and match them up and fill in the rest. But at least I'll have some in there for you to look at. To start with. Does that make sense? So you'll be able to see, you know, what colors you can use that are close. It's like when you look at a recipe and think, what can I substitute for that? It's what this will be, but for colored pencils. I don't know if I'll get it finished before Christmas or not. Now, I am, do you see how I'm playing this pretty loose? I'm just keeping, I'm really muting it and letting the, the pieces overlap, not keeping defined edges on this. The reason for that, look how in focus this looks and look how this one looks more blurred. Yeah, and see, we said we wanted this more blurred. 
So that's how you do that. I'm going to take just the greens real quick because we have about 15 minutes left and I'd like to do some of the greens here. We're going to do the darkest. Aha, uh -huh, see there? Caught myself. Going to do the darkest color. And then I'm going to go in circles as I fade out. Dark, and then fade. Dark, and then fade. And back in here is really dark. That could be more flower. I'm going to assume this is flower. I'm going to assume this is greenery. Okay? And then I'm going to fade and fade. And this is going to be the dark. And that's going to push that all the way to the back and pop this up to the front. Okay? Same thing here. This triangle right here, that's in the very back. And it's got that dark, dark on it. Now then let's go to the medium. Actually, let's skip ahead to the light. The light is, there's some right here. See how that's light, light? There's a little bit right down through here. All the rest of that's medium. So now go in, and in our circles, we're going to do our medium. And that's going to help us blend by doing these circles. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate. Is that a word? I'm sure it is. That in, but with the medium. Then I'm overlapping and doing my circles so that those two colors blend. This is my medium over here. Now I'm going to come in with my light and I'm going to go over the entire stem just to kind of blend it. And that's how easy the stems are. That couldn't be much easier. And do you understand why I like to blend with the, the lightest color? Now, all this back here, I am thinking it's either more of the lotus flower or it's greenery. I'm going to treat it like greenery. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my ovals and all this dark and I'm going to get light lighter as I fade out okay and then this here is going to be darker I really need to clean my table that all that paint is what's putting texture on here even with my clear plastic underneath I'm still picking up that texture <laughs> which I guess is okay. Doesn't hurt to have a little bit of texture in the picture, but it's just weird. Took me a bit to figure out what was going on. That's dark. This here is dark. Now I'm gonna keep it fuzzy on the edges because these flowers back here just kind of blend into it. And that's how you're gonna be able to keep it um, Unfocused. Okay, then I'm going to go to my medium and come in right next to this, getting even lighter as I come out. There's a lot of light right there, so I don't want to come very far out with this. 
I want to be able to transition to that light color that's there. And there's some light here. But I don't want to jump from dark straight to light, so I have to put a little bit of this color in there. And I'll put a little bit in here too. Now I'm going to take my lighter shade and I'm going to blend. I'm going to blend it all. Okay, can you see what we're doing? I don't want to lose you. I know it all looks dark, but I've got a couple of greens. Well, you've seen me do it, and I'm blending with the third one. So just put your color in there. You can do it. If you've got any questions on this, just let me know. We'll address them. Put your comments down underneath the, the video there. See how that just looks faded because there's no definite lines? And that's why I just keep doing the circles. And your paper in the book when you get it, no matter which one you get or if you get them both, your paper is going to be much better than this paper. Okay, this thing's driving me crazy. That's my mat for when I'm painting, and it's it's got to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. But whenever you order your book and it comes in, the paper that it's on is so much better than any of the papers that you can buy at the craft stores that um, your coloring is just going to look magical. You're going to finish a piece and go, oh my gosh, I did that? I know when I did my first one, I was just like, wait until my husband got home. Oh my gosh, look what I did today. He's like, yeah. And I went, no, no, seriously. And he goes, well, yeah, of course you did. You know, they always believe in us more than we believe in ourselves. But then he got to looking at it, and he goes, you know, that's really good. I said, I can't believe I got through all that. But yeah, you're going to take your time now and just keep blending this over and over until you get it all blended together to where you've just got soft, melty background color. It's about the only way I know to put it. And then I'm going to turn my paper so that I can get to what I need to get to going this way. So if you need to turn your paper, then you go ahead. Now I will tell you, when you're doing background and you're trying to blend really good, you've gone one direction and you've pushed a lot of the pencil down into the valleys that are the um, texture of paper, you can always turn and go the other direction and push the pencil down in some more and do more blending that way. Um, pencil sits on top and the more layers you do, the more you're pushing it down in. Now, I do know that we still have our blender over here. And I'm going to see if it will help me blend any of this out any more than what I have. Because this is background color. If it does take some of it off with the blender, at this point that's okay with me. Because it's background and we don't want it real defined anyway. Yeah, you can see I'm getting little bits of stuff. Yeah, that's just where it's picking it up and moving it around. And I may have already picked up so much texture off of my painting mat that I won't be able to get that out of this. But that's okay. You still can see and understand what we've done here. And this has been real time. I do not speed up or slow down my videos. So now you really know how long it should take you to do one of these. But that's our start on it. 
you're going to do all the rest of this around the outside just like we did this corner okay now hold on don't don't get dizzy I'm gonna try to zoom back out there we go whoops okay so there now you can see what we've got going on so far all right and do you see how that looks like it's blurred this one looks a little more blur bleh, easy for me to say this one looks a little more blurred and this one looks a little more defined okay all right so you know what you're doing now keep going um, let Nicole know how much you appreciate her book and her getting you started go to Amazon and uh, pick up one of the books she's got beautiful nature and then she's got I believe the other one is beautiful animals so um, but they're both right there if you do a, a search on Nicole Stalker grayscale coloring books they will both pop right up so anyway have fun with this again thank you Nicole we have appreciated once more getting a glimpse inside your grayscale books and um, we would love to know when you put out another book so please come back and visit us and put the link down in the comments when you do that whenever that might be all right y'all have an awesome rest of the day